This program is made possible in part by the following sponsors. At Northwestern Orthopedics, we celebrate the role that physical activity and sportsmanship play in a healthy lifestyle. We are proud to help athletes of all ages stay in the game through injury prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation. Northwestern Orthopedics, restoring function, enhancing lives. Rise Vermont, good health is key to a happy life. Rise Vermont is a movement towards better health for people of all ages in Franklin County. Joining Rise Vermont will give you tools, support, reward, and recognition for moving more, eating well, and connecting with your community. Embrace your new healthy lifestyle with Rise Vermont. Fiddlehead Dental, located in St. Albans, Fiddlehead Dental has spent decades creating a family partnership between its staff and patients. With no lectures and the newest comfort technologies, the dental welcomes patients of all ages in an effort to keep everyone in Franklin County smiling. JC Image. With 25 plus years serving local schools, clubs, and regional businesses, JC Image continues to stress quality care and customer service. Check out their apparel work on our Northwest Access TV videographers throughout the year. Handy Buick GMC Cadillac. A family-run business spanning three generations has been serving the community since 1958. You can catch owner Dave Handy on the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County on Channel 15, Northwest Access Television. Handy Chevrolet, serving Franklin County for over 50 years with a new and pre-owned Chevrolet inventory and a state-of-the-art certified service department. To learn more about how your company can become a local sports sponsor, contact Northwest Access TV at 802-782. 8676. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Highgate Vermont, Highgate Sports Arena. As tonight, one of the biggest rivalries in all of Franklin County hits the ice once again Be Bellows Free Academy and Missisquoi Valley Union. I'm Nick Mumley alongside my partner Dustin Tanner for tonight's game. Dustin, what needs to happen? for either team to win this game. Well, you know, it's good to see the rivalry again. There was a bunch of years where these two teams didn't play, and now MBU and BFA get a chance to face off. Early season, you know, don't put a lot of stock into this type of game, but it's still fun for all of us here on Northwest Axe team to finally see it again. And it's going to be an interesting game this year because BFA has got a real reloading squad. They're young. they got a bunch of freshmen starting. I think this is a year where MBU is expecting to make some sort of push to maybe even get to Gutterson themselves. So it's going to be an interesting game to see. I think MBU has got a real chance to pull something out, but they got to play good, disciplined hockey. And if I'm BFA, you know, Toby Duclin, He's got to get these young guys into these big game situations. Good way to start. Your biggest county rival, you know, the only other place in uh, Franklin County that plays hockey. Good chance to say, hey, this is a big game. It's not Essex. It's not CVU, but you want to come out and play good hockey tonight, guys. Right. This could be a, a real a real season-changing game, honestly, um, the way I look at it. If you're standing in MVU's shoes here, if you beat BFA, one of the, you know, the program in Vermont hockey, you know, that is just a launching pad for the rest of the season. For BFA, you know, you win this game in front of a big crowd here in Highgate, get your season off to a good start with your first win. But, you know, MVU, they lose this game. It's not a big problem. If BFA loses this game, this could be a troubling season for them. Yeah, and, you know, if I'm MVU, it's been a couple years since the Thunderbirds have been able to make any sort of run towards Gutterson. You want to get some momentum. This is on your home ice. You get the best school in Vermont on your ice. Play is underway here this afternoon from Highgate. BFA yesterday in their game against Northeast Clinton skated to a 2-2 tie. MVU lost 6-2 to Lowell, Massachusetts. Puck back up to the point. There's a wrist shot from Charlie Gates that goes wide. Braylon Parent plays it in the corner, and now it'll be cleared back out by BFA. Kyle Gilbert back skating to it. And Gates will settle it at his own blue line. He gets it up to Jackson Porter. Porter will dump and change, and BFA will go for a regroup. Yando plays it up the boards, and it'll be back down the ice. For Gilbert, once again, he tries to stop, but has a tough time with it. Derek Nato is in there, and taken away by Joel Gagne, and he's hitting the boards. Nice hit there from BFA's Noah Vincelet. And MVU back in transition, and Ryan LaRush. One of the best hitters in Division II, throwing in his body around here early in a shot there. He's steered aside by BFA goaltender Dan Ellis. Now here come the Bob Whites in transition once again, cleared in by Horrigan and played there by Bonnet, but he has it skip over his sick. 
Here comes Mason Lemna on the right wing side. He fans on a clearing attempt. Oh, the big hit on the boards. It's going to be a penalty. Right I believe it is Bonnet that's going to be going off as he hit him into the boards. He was he was down in a defenseless position, and Bonnet punched him into the boards right in front of the stands. 13:33 left in the first. The too, you know, you really can't do that. You got refs have been trained to watch the boards more and more. As yes. It's a real dangerous play, especially at this level. I'd say a uh, good chance for MBU to get some momentum here. They've had a couple shots on net already. They're playing some good hockey. This is how you want to start a game. Get the power play, see what you can set up. So Bonnet in the box for two minutes. Braylon Parent takes the face off. It's one back. Ryan LaRush kicks it to keep it in the zone, but then gets taken down. And MV will regroup. That's Hunter Mason going through his defensive zone. He drops it off for Kyle Gilbert. Gilbert now drops and spins around, trying to set up a breakout. MVU struggled with that a lot last night in their 6-2 loss to Lowell. They could not break out the puck whatsoever. And now here's a good one. Braylon Parent up the middle. Parent tries to get in there, but Horrigan does a good job to take him off the puck. Played back around. LaRush with a one-time blast, and that one skips in. Steered away by Ellis. One down low by Lemna, and turned back around. MVU trying to find it here. Back to the point. Gilbert, LaRush oh, set up for the one time, there. but he couldn't get it off. Falling into the boards, trying to keep the puck in. It'll be cleared out by BFA. That's Colin Audi clearing it out and a regroup for Missiskoi. Gilbert with speed blows the tire. And Missiskoi trying to find it back. BFA trying to get in there. That's Colby Brulette with it. He'll dump it back in. Yeah, this is BFA's bread and butter when it comes to the PK and the power play. You know, they just they just don't let you get penalty goal. They just don't let you get goals when you're on the uh, man advantage. They're just so good at shutting you down. BFA's four check incredible right now. The way they're keeping MVU from breaking out the puck. Chris Bissett sets up. Just 40 seconds on this Missiskoi power play. They haven't really had a good opportunity yet, and the breakout fails right here. Icing waved off by the official as it's picked up and cleared by Benoit. Bissett oh, plays, it to the, play. plays it to nobody, and here comes Burlett up against the boards against Stephen King. Three on one. Missiskoi is going to take it away, and Braylon Parent trying to find something now. Parent. Missiskoi's top line center trying to find something. He goes in diagonal across the zone. Now cuts the net. Parrott with a shot. And it's stopped by Ellis up against his left post for a whistle. You know, in the NHL, you can get away with those behind the back no look passes because your timing on an NHL team is down to the to the T. And you know your teammate's going to be here. But at that high school level, you can't. That could have been a goal for BFA. That was a real good chance to get a shorty for BFA. You've got to know where you're passing the puck at all times, especially in a game like this. Thunderbirds with eight seconds left on the power play. Face off one by the Bob Whites, lifted the length of the ice. It'll take a hop, skip, and a jump onto PJ Bouchard, making his second start of the season. He shut out Colchester last Wednesday night. And the sophomore gets the call in net once again today. Charlie Gates with it here, penalty expires, and Owen Bonnet returns to the skating surface. You know, on one hand, if I'm MVU, I'm glad that BFA is getting no pressure right now. On the other hand, you should have a goal by now if you're going to beat a team like this. All right. Kicked down by Bonnet. He can't find anything with it. Porter able to chip it down the length of the ice. MVU will use this opportunity to change, and it will go down for an icing with 10.59 to one go. Of the rules I hate in high school hockey in Vermont. I think that you can't change in an icing should be at every level of the sport. I really do. Yeah, there's arguments for both sides. I would tend to agree with you on that one. I think that, you know, that's kind of a get-out-of-jail-free free card um, in today's today's game and high, at the high school level. But we'll see if they do change that. I think they probably should. Puck played there by BFA and now taken right back up. And Joel Gagne will set up. Gagne goes, tries to go cross ice to Lemna. Lemna can't find it, and he gets hit into the boards there by BFA's Cole Brace. Here they come, and the arm is up. And Obvious trip there at center ice. You can't, if I'm envy, you can't do that. These refs are looking like they're going to let you get away with some hitting, but they're not going to let you get away with playing penalties. You can't just trip it. You just can't. So we do see the penalty called here and headed to the box for Missiskoi. is Joel Gagne. 
Shot off the draw there, it stops. And cleared up the boards, deflects off of the stick of Yando. It'll go back now to the BFA captain, Cooper Coffey. He spins, gives himself some space. Here comes BFA again, Yando walks in, moves to his left, and now falls with the puck. Coffey over there to try to keep it in. Puck still loose right along the blue line here. They're still digging for it. There's five people in there, and BFA digs it out. Vince Lett down low. Vince Lett and Brulette on the ice at the same time is a very dangerous combination. As Yando walks in, Yando moves to his right once again, or to his left once again, moves in, Sick tries moves. to drive around, now goes up top, top of the circle, fires one in a nice save by the left glove, left arm rather, of PJ Bouchard. Now Coffey walks in, Coffey's shot, blocked down, LaRush trying to get it, get to it, he's in an arms race with Coffey. And they'll both go to the corner. Coffee's going to win that round. And now here comes BFA, back with the pressure again. It's Ben Pudva. Pudva on the left wing side, unable to do anything with it, and it'll go all the way back down the ice. Horrigan and Lazinski out there defensively for BFA. Horrigan will touch up here. Horrigan with a indirect pass up the left wing side. Derek Nato, shot, save, rebound. A big, juicy rebound let out by Bouchard. Now Nato behind the net. 17 seconds left on the power play. Horrigan lets go a drive and a patent saved by Bouchard. Back up to Kyle Gilbert. He'll chip it high off the glass and out of, and out of the zone. This will kill off the Missisquoi penalty and we're back to even strength here with eight and a half minutes to go in the first period. Thunderbirds did a really good job there of not letting BFA set up the screen in front of the net making BFA use their speed and skill to get shots, and it shut down the power play. It's a young team, Nick, with the Bob Whites. You never, you know, oh, that's going to be offsides, but it's a young team, you know, make them rely on their speed because scoring with speed is much less efficient than just setting up a screen in front of the net and camping out. Joel Gagne set to take the face off here, fresh out of the penalty box. And he wins it all the way back into his own zone. Kyle Gilbert throws it around the boards. Mason Lemnot trying to chip it out. Finds Gagne now on the right wing. Gagne cuts middle. It's a two-on-one developing. Gagne goes backhand and loses it. Cooper Coffey knocks the puck off his stick that time. Thrown out in front. Nobody home. Isaac Overton was in the area, but nowhere near the puck. Now moving in is Matt Merrill. Merrill tries to get it away. Stephen King takes it from him. King goes down, and Cooper Coffey will reset. Cleared all the way down. No ice is the ruling. Ryan LaRush picks it up with speed around his own net. LaRush trying to make another rush here, moves to the middle, but lost the puck in the process, and it's cleared in by Masiskoy. BFA trying to set something up again. Cooper Coffey trying to break the puck out. Braylon Parent on him, knocks it away for a quick second, and Coffey chips it up and out off the glass. Chris Bissett sends it right back down to Coffey. BFA needs to get something going here. They haven't really had a set of sustained pressure at all yet in this game. Even with the power play, you need to get some time in MBU zone. And, you know, you don't want to play a game as they ice it there, I believe. You don't want to play a game on neutral ice because nobody wins that way. And this is, you know, MBU is getting the start that they need for this game. We saw a lot of this from BFA yesterday as well. They, they're doing a lot more chipping and chasing and just then just going right at it. And that, it just hasn't been working for them in these last two games. They, I think they've just got to go straight at MVU right here and see what they can do. They have the speed to beat this, these Missisquoi defenders. Puck there off the faceoff. Parent got a soft shot and an easy cover up for Ellis. Any, seven. any idea if Ellis is still going by Guy Ellis this year? Did you I confirm that with Toby? I, I didn't know that was a thing. That's what they called him last year. Guy Ellis, huh? Well, maybe that's what we're supposed to call him. I have no idea. There's a oh. shot from Mason, and that rattles wide of the cage. Nato finds it, tries to get it out, but waiting there to keep it in was Kyle Gilbert from Missisquoi. Or Charlie Gates, rather. Gilbert now on the left side, tries to keep it out. And now Brulette sets up, but he lost it. Hunter Mason walks in, takes a shot, and it gets knocked down. BFA doing a great job restricting MVU as soon as they gain the line. Now cutting oh. in, and a big try there from Yando, but it didn't work. 
Now back to Gates. Gates tosses it to open space. Somebody's got to pick it up. Stephen King tries to. Big hit there on Jake Benjamin of the Thunderbirds, and it's back in for for Yandow to play. You know, it's like when you're playing that NHL video games and you're using those, like, multi-move dekes and you just miss that last button. Oh, could have had a couple good goals there. Back in off the boards. Chris Bissett tries to play it off the boards, but it's knocked down by Bonnet. Back in they come. Yandow fires a shot from center ice, and it goes wide of the cage. Picked up by Carter Letourneau. And this one's tipped up in the air by Matt Merrill, who almost scored his first varsity goal last night, but was robbed by a great stick save from the Northeastern Clinton goaltender. Ryan LaRush throws a hit against Bonnet. Digging for it now, LaRush gets it loose. LaRush gets it to space. Hunter Hebert is there for Missisquoi, trying to keep it in that time. Was Horrigan, and he does. LaRush to set up once again. LaRush spins. And LaRush now with some time and space tries to get it to Benjamin, but it doesn't work. You know, that almost too much sauce out. on that one. Just a good, good vision there to go for the spinneroo and not to go right into the BFA defender. But he just had nobody open there. You know, one thing I'm starting to notice, puck's a little bouncy. It's hot outside today. It's 40 degrees. That affects the ice in here. In a very rare situation here, it is not f completely freezing cold inside Highgate Arena today. I'm wearing the one layer and the light coat, Nick. Yeah. Might be the only time this year I can do that. It's like summer out here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now back out they come. There's Charlie Gates. He'll knock it down. And Gates will regroup. And here comes Joel Gagne. Gagne kicks to the stick. Goes to the goal and just misses wide of the net. Gates keeps it in the zone, but nobody's there for it. Gilbert hustling to the other side. He'll keep it in. Gates or er, Gilbert fires a shot, and it'll go all the way back around once again. There's another shot from Gagne, and that one wouldn't go. But that was Stephen King, rather, taking that shot. This one's knocked in the air. A couple high sticks trying to find it, but it goes to the glove of Ellis. Baseball catch there for Ellis. Again, NBU's been able to get constant pressure in the BFA zone tonight. Yeah, this game seems a lot more even matched than last year. Last for sure. year, you know, BFA just came and laid the hammer in on MVU, but this year, MVU can skate these boys. Lazinski behind his own net, looking to regroup. Lazinski, all by himself now, one against two, chips it in. Behind the net, Charlie Gates is there. Nado up against him, loose in the skates, and here comes Braylon Parent. Parent up the right wing side. He fires and a save, rebound, and a good chance for Jackson Porter, but he couldn't bear it. He fanned on the shot. Now walking in again, trying to find something is Missiscoy. Hunter Mason takes it away. A bad turnover for BFA. Mason on the backhand, couldn't find the net. Mason tries to center, loose puck in the slot, and it'll come away, but still in the zone for Missiscoy. Braylon Parent goes for it behind the net, knocks it away from from the defenseman Owen Benoit. Now back up, Gagne with lays a big hit. That's a big clean hit, Nick, big clean hits. And now, oh, Gagne at his skates caught up in the stick of Ben Pudva. And now under four to go in the first period, a crazy bounce in on PJ Bouchard, and he was lucky to get that one. I think we're going to see a couple of those tonight where, you know, we might see a couple slimy goals, Nick, where the puck just bounces the wrong way, hits hits weird and gets past the goaltender. But uh, a couple inches there on MVU, almost had a goal. What a good possession for the Thunderbirds. Gagne set to take the face off. Back to the point. Coffey, low on net, and he got blocked before it got there. All the way back down to be played by Morin. Morin up the... Wall there and now takes it away and here comes BFA there offside. Vincelet almost had a point blank shot on PJ Bouchard, but they were just offside and MVU just saved right there. We saw what Noah Vincelet can do last night. He had the game tying goal in the tie against Northeast Clinton with just a minute 15 to go. Charlie Gates off the boards, try to find Hunter Mason in transition. They couldn't quite do it. Gilbert turns dangerous pass across to Charlie Gates. And now here comes Porter once again. Porter gets hit by Bonnet, and it'll go all the way back down. Braylon Parent to play it there. Parent tries to get it loose up and into the boards as Mason now loose in the slot. Porter finds it, can't get a shot away. Try to keep it in. Mason with it. Mason fires and a save by Ellis. Now Mason behind the net again, throws his man into the boards. 
and Porter plays it around the boards once again. Raylan Parent tries to toss it out in front. Nobody's home, and BFA will chip it up off the glass and out. Gilbert settles it. Puck still on edge. Gilbert gets it up to Parent. Parent has Porter with him. Parent wants a regroup again. They get it across, pass deflected. Gates has got to get this out of the zone. There's a bad breakout by MVU right here. Porter will get it up. Porter will clear it. And nobody was on the ice there. Nearly too many men for BFA. That's a very close. That was about as close as it get. Whoa, that one just skipped by Bouchard. He, he was late reacting to that shot from Cooper Coffee, and that one was almost a fluke goal to get this one underway. Coffee now regrouping in his own zone. Brought back around, and here comes Cole Brace. Brace to going diagonal around the zone. LaRush chips it up off the boards and out. BFA regroups, and they are just tossing it. Their entire offense right now is just tossing the puck on from center ice. I mean, that's really all they can do right now. They got to get some time out of their own zone, or they're going to let a goal in. Gilbert, he sends it down. Nothing there. <laughs> It tricked everybody, even the official called an, off, <laughs> called an icing before he realized that the puck was knocked back down. Now BFA in transition again. Here comes Brulette. Brulette hit off the puck. Brulette keeps it going. Oh, Brulette wow. works oh, wow. around. Brulette oh, scores! Colby wow. Brulette can be unstoppable, and that's just a case of that right there. He and just, BFA centers made it one nothing. He just had four guys crash on him, and he just took a hit, took a hit, got past one, and just puts it in. You can't, you can't defend better than that, Nick. Yeah, that's about as good as it gets right there. And you simply aren't going to see those goals in Division Two. Missiskoy just unlucky right there. It's as Roulette works his magic. Because MVU has had the better period, I think. Oh yeah. There's no doubt about that. MVU's dominated this first period. Who would have ever thought, coming into this game, that you would be that we would be saying MVU's dominated the first period against BFA? Here they come. King gets it loose. King walks in, and it goes just wide. Now here they come again. Lemna tosses it towards the net, taken away here, and Yando walks up and tosses it in for an icing, and BFA will get a change. Yeah, you know, the thing for MVU right now is that you cannot let that goal take the wind out of your sails. You're playing really good hockey. Sometimes you just get beat by an amazing play and cannot get down in yourselves for that one. Braylon Parent to take the face off against Noah Vincelet. Parent wins it to the corner. Oregon around the boards. Fanning on it there. For BFA and now Gagne takes it away. Gagne skips one on save. Rebound is loose in the crease. And Parent couldn't tap it in as Ellis gets the whistle with 51.2 remaining in the first period. It was the freshman Sean Beauregard that turned it over in his own zone leading to that MVU chance. A lot of turnovers for BFA right now. Gagne. BFA is playing like a young team. They are, yeah. Nine freshmen on this BFA team, a very rare occurrence. You rarely see freshmen on this team at all. And a tripping penalty here taken by Braylon Parent. BFA is going to begin the second period on the power play. There's a shot by Beauregard off the side of the net. Now going down low is Vincelet. Vincelet trying to get a man, trying to get a goal here with the extra skater. Back up to the top. Horrigan fires it on. Parent with the block, but it, and he would have had a breakaway if he wouldn't have committed that penalty. <laughs> Kind of a chicken and the egg thing there. Did he have the breakaway because he was on defense because he committed the penalty or? Uh... You never know. But either way, a tough break for MVU. They're to the, they are going to the penalty kill for the second time this evening. Got to go into the locker room only down by one. You can drop something, just, just ice this puck for the next 20 seconds. We saw how quickly this these games can change. And a shot from Matt Bouchard. And now LaRush loses his stick. Under 10 seconds. Yando at the point, chips it in. Bissette trying to get there. Bissette needs to clear it. There's two, there's one, and MVU kills off at least the first 20 seconds of the power play. 
and a pretty big moral victory for these Thunderbirds to go into the locker room down just one nothing after the events of the last two minutes of this first period. Yeah, you know, really good first period if you're MBU. They've played some really good hockey today. They just have gotten some bounces that haven't gotten their way. You know, you play three periods of hockey like that, you should be able to win the game, one would think. So we'll, we'll see what they can do coming out here. They got to hold it on the power play or on the penalty kill. They got to hold the penalty kill, and I think they can. That'll do it for this first period. We'll be right back with period number two. You're watching Vermont Boys Ice Hockey here on Northwest Access TV. Welcome back to Highgate Arena here for day number two and the last game of the Missisquoi Holiday Tournament that has already been won by Lowell because Lowell came in here and just crushed everybody. They won last night 6-2 to two against MVU and today 6 nothing over Northeast Clinton. And But now MVU and BFA, the headline matchup of this tournament, is through one period. It's one nothing BFA, but MVU didn't play that bad, Dustin. No, they played some really good hockey, and MVU had some real good chances. You know, four or five legitimate chances to get a goal, and they just couldn't make it happen. It's going to be real interesting here as they have a minute 39 left on the PK to see if they can keep BFA out of the net and then see what they can do off that PK. You know, you play the same hockey MVU played for the first three period or for the first three periods, you'll you'll get a chance to win this game. Yeah, this is a this is going to be the the game changing period. I think this game's going to get decided in this period because, you know, MVU, we're going to see if they have the endurance to skate with BFA. Sure, if you skate with the team through one period, that's good, but it's a, the game's three periods long, so you've got to, you know, be able to show that endurance and, and be able to go with these guys for the entire duration of this game. I think we're going to find out in this second period if MVU is up for that challenge. Yep. Be interesting to see here. We'll set it up in 15 minutes. Brulette will take the face off here. BFA with the man advantage for another minute 39. Braylon Parent is in the box. After receiving a tripping call, face off one back here. And Yandow will play it over to Cooper Coffey. Coffey skates it up, feels some pressure, gets it over to Yandow. Yando on the left wing side, looking for a pass over to Coffey. BFA setting up in the umbrella again. Coffey fires a shot, and it's knocked down. He'll have to regroup once again. Hunter Mason gives chase on him. Not too strong of a forecheck here from Missiscoy. Coffey, Yando on the left wing side again. Yando stops at the goal line, sets it up. Back to Coffey. Coffey across, Burlett. Fires, save, loose puck, rebound, Brulette goes top of the circles, back up top to Coffee. Coffee sets up, and a shot there goes wide, and a whistle here. So it's really interesting, you know, I caught Coach Toby out in the hallway. He was coaching up four or five players. That thing that BFA just did on the left where he skated and turned around, skated back up, exactly what Coach is telling him to do here. He's, you know, telling him to... Be patient with it. Give your chance. You know, give your guys a chance to set up, and that's what they're doing. And well, here's the problem. Here's the problem with what BFA is doing right now is that their entire power play is carry the puck up into the zone, stop, pass it to Cooper Coffee at the point where he takes a shot into a crowd, and that just hasn't worked for him all weekend long. I don't know why they keep going back to it. it I, I don't know. If I'm BFA right now, I know that I've got the speed advantage. I know that, you know, my players are more skilled than the Siskoys. I'm just going right after these guys. Go right to the net every time. Well, that's what I think Coach Toby was talking about a little bit, too, and was saying, hey, you are a better team than these guys. Set it up. Don't don't shoot into a crowd. Like, give yourself more space. And a shot there from Lazinski draws a crowd in front of P.J. Bouchard. A little bit of... Pleasantries exchanged afterwards, but a whistle. 12 seconds to go on the BFA power play. 13.33 in the second period. Just some how you doing? How's your day going, bud? You know, nothing more than that. Talking about lawn care options, you know. <laughs> Nato takes the draw, but it's won by Hunter Mason, who we saw head to the bench earlier in this power play. Gingerly, oh and the boy. puck comes loose. Here comes a chance from a Cisco. Oh, and it just out. It just goes out of the reach of Jackson Porter. Missisquoi almost had a shorthanded breakaway, but the good news is they've all but killed off this power play, earning an offensive zone faceoff with two seconds remaining on the Braylon Parent minor. That's always nice. You know, that, was, that could have been the chance that MVU needed to get into this game, and oh, man, it just it sucks that they couldn't get it to happen. Mason loses his stick off the drop. 
Benoit sends it around. Pinching up is Kyle Gilbert, but there's nobody down low. Braylon Parrott is out of the box now from Missisquoi, back to even strength. Benoit there at the line, puts it back to the Missisquoi blue line. Gilbert, running out of room, spins back and backhands it up off the wall to Braylon Parrott. Parrott tries to cut middle, loses the puck, gains it back again, taken away from him there, and now BFA in transition. Taken up, and now here comes Porter. Can he get redemption? Porter to the net. Porter fires, and it's stopped by Ellis. Not really the best angle you want on that shot, but you know, he put it up net, so. Porter takes the puck away from Benoit, who's still able to muscle it over. And BFA will take it up the other way. That's Christian Valley getting it in. And now Parent goes for the puck against Coffee. Coffee will ice it to relieve the pressure. Good ice there, a really good chance to ice it. Yeah, we talked about that icing rule earlier. Like it or like it or hate it, but I mean that's a good opportunity to just get some get get rid of the pressure when MVU's clearly got some momentum going right now. Critical face off of BFA. You gotta get it out of the zone and establish some possession. One there, but knocked away. BFA can't keep it in. Lemna at the oh, post oh. had a chance, and now here they come the other way. Nadu with a lot of space, and he's going up against Chris Bissett. Easily walks in, and the shot is deflected away by Bissett. A great play to recover defensively there by Chris Bissett. Shot there goes wide of the goal from Yandau, and now BFA trying to regroup again at the point, and here they come. Moving in for Missiskoy. That's Stephen King, but it's taken away by Yando as he tried to cross over. And now Yando will take it up off the glass just in front of the MVU bench. And Nato will take it up the left wing side again against Chris Bissett. Bissett punches him into the boards. And MVU takes over possession beyond the net, but a bad turnover out in front. And they're still going for it. Gagne with the hit there against Ben Pudva. And back they come again. B BFA trying to find something. Up against the left wing boards, taken away by Bonnet. He moves to space and a shot is knocked down. Save rebound and and Brulette will get it up top. Brulette tries to spin it in, but it hits off the official. Exactly what you need here if you're the Bob Whites. Kill some of that Thunderbird momentum that they've gotten here in this period. And this one will not be an icing, a perfectly deflected puck off the boards, and MVU just earned themselves an offensive faceoff as Dan Ellis has to cover it up. 11-18 to go. Parent will face Vincelet in the face-off circle. BFA really stacking on defense here. Ref's gonna call him wow. on Wow. And so, Bonnet had to take the draw. It still works out for BFA though. And back up to the point and out. Gilbert has it knocked over his head, but the play was offside because the puck was in the air. He's very lucky they didn't get called for a high stick because if that puck yes. touches his stick, that's a high sticking right there. MVU setting it up. Nice pass just out of the reach of Parent. And the struggles for this Missiscoy breakout continue here into this second period. They've, stood, they've put a lot of pressure on net, Dustin, but it's, man, just, it's unfortunate that they can't get. If they could get if they could get these breakouts down 10 out of 10 times, they would be running away with this game. You right know, now. it's just the little things that MBU needs to work on right now. BFA has looked lost at times again there. Another thing for BFA, young team mistakes, and MBU just got to start capitalizing on them here at some point. And another mistake there is the puck is rattled around in the corner, taken up here by Benoit, and now back up to the point, unable to keep it in is Charlie Gates, the sophomore defenseman, and now taken by Bonnet, he moves it, or by Vincelet, he moves in, and the shot is covered up there by P.J. Ah, Bouchard. man, five more feet, that would have been a goal for BFA. Bad, bad, bad turnover by the Thunderbirds there. Yeah, you just can't make mistakes, and MVU saw, you know, what Colby Roulette can do. Noah Vincelet's not far behind him. Mm -hmm. If you allow these guys space and time to move around with the puck, we saw what they can do with pressure on them. Mm -hmm. you, these guys are going to score goal after goal after goal on you if you don't, if you don't um, execute every single time they're on the ice. Yep. Couldn't agree with you anymore, Nick. Bissett there up against the boards. Colin Odie centered. Back to Coffee and a block by Jake Benjamin. He's feeling that one. And now Carter Letourneau spins it to the middle. Coffee will grab it and move it back up. Letourneau tries to dig it out. Played in the boards there. That's Ezra Lanfear for BFA. 
And a puck loose at center ice and cleared in. Coffey will go for it. As we get underneath the 10 minute mark here in this second period. Coffey with a rare turnover, puck to the middle. But MVU couldn't make anything to happen with it. Back to the point. Bissette fires a butterfly of a shot that didn't even get to the net there. And BFA takes it back out. Here comes Merrill. Merrill removed from the puck by Ryan LaRush. And put back up Colby Brulette. Brulette down low, back up top, and unable to save it in the zone was Cooper Coffey, and the BFA captain will circle around in his own zone and now regroup once again. MVU with a bad change, and Coffey with an opportunity here. Coffey deeks right and gets taken out by Joel Gagne. Good Moving hit it up by off the Gagne. boards there for MVU's Ryan LaRush. LaRush kicks it down, and MVU still get a chance, but they run into each other. Gagne and LaRush ran into each other as Brulette gets hit into the boards by LaRush, and it's clear in by MVU under eight under nine minutes to go now and it's an icing call face off coming back down into the MVU zone uh, this game's getting more interesting with every second play and oh mistake hockey Nick this has not been a clean hockey game for either team we're early in the season you gotta and the question is gonna be how do these teams work on getting rid of these mistakes and cleaning this game up a little bit and we talk about the warm day it does seem like the puck is bouncing a little bit more than usual here today, Highgate Arena known for its crazy bounces, but you add, you know, higher temperatures for this season and things could get interesting here for sure. They already have. We've seen a couple of crazy hops. You got to think one of the, there's a chance at least for one of those to impact this game directly. Oh yeah, we're going to get a slimy goal at some point tonight. There's a shot there by Burlett, kept in by Lazinski at the left point. And now Pudva tries to move in, but it's taken off his stick. MVU in transition, a two-on-two. Two. Here comes Braylon Parent. Parent walks in, fires one just over the glove side of Dan Ellis. And now digging it out is Gilbert. Parent in the zone. Parent spins to the middle, and Porter couldn't break free of Dominic Luzinski. Porter now one-on-two. Porter breaks free again. Porter with Hunter Mason there. Braylon Parent tries to get it loose, but here comes Brulette. Brulette moves to his left. Now back to his right against Gilbert. Brulette goes backhand, and it's knocked down by Parent, who stayed with him the entire time. Now here comes Jackson Porter up off the boards. He'll spin it in. Play would have been offside there, so MVU can't get the chance. But a turnover. Parent reads and intercepts, but now that's taken away by Vincelet. Vincelet moves in. He's taken down by Hebert, but he stays with it. And the pass across just misses Beauregard right there. And now out comes Charlie Gates, MVU, trying to find some, something in the breakout, but once again a turnover. Parent cannot do it all himself. He needs to get some help from his MBU teammates. He's been trying. He's been flying all over the uh, arena tonight. Parent, at the usual work, he has been so good for MBU over the last couple of years. Now in his senior year, trying to make it a career by beating BFA. Puck tipped in there. Carter Letourneau couldn't find it. And now here comes Beauregard. Winds and fires, and it's blocked down. Now back behind the net, Gilbert gives chase. Vince Lett staying with it. Back up top. There's a shot deflected down. MVU still got it. They will clear it, and they will happily take the icing here with 6.43 to go in the second. And it's... And it just continues to be this breakout for MVU that is yeah. just not working for them. It's going to cause them another goal here. This is the thing of MBU when they're playing into the flow of the game. MBU has the advantage, but when they can't get it out of their own zone, BFA is getting opportunities. Here's a nice pass across, and MBU is in. Oh, but a pass across there instead of taking the shot with Stephen King, and a stick goes flying, and I believe that one belongs to Merrill. Gagne goes down at the hands of Horrigan. And BFA breaks it in, trying to find a shot there, couldn't do it. And a hit him hit into there. the boards, kid. That's how you deliver a hit. And Stephen King working all by himself. Just not a lot of communication right now between these Thunderbirds. The passing hasn't been there on any part of the ice. Porter tries to find it. Porter tries to get the stick away, and a big hit into the boards there. Horrigan battles with Porter. Porter working one on three, though. No help whatsoever. Stephen King was in there, chipped off the boards. Cole Brace tries to find it. King goes middle. Once again, nobody home. And now back out comes BFA, and the puck is offside with 5.44 to go. 
DFA has got to start watching some of that off ice play. You could have called an interference there. We had one right in front of us there. You can't you can't tie him up like that if he doesn't have the puck. Yeah, you you can't take those risks right now. You know they've gotten away with these in what has been a, a really relatively you know big time defensive, low penalties, um, pretty chippy. But you know if they. If and this does turn, oh wow! We're gonna have a penalty on the, the board. DFA does so. have a penalty now. It's gonna come on Cole Brace. And just as we talked about how there hasn't been a ton of penalties in this game, MVU to their to the power play for the second time this evening. Hunter Mason, the sophomore forward, takes it against Brulette, wins it across. Gagne back to the point. Now across, there's a shot and a glove save by Ellis. A big time shot by Joel Gagne from the point. And Ellis gloved it down. That's probably the best shot we've seen from MVU tonight. I think one second later, somebody is in Ellis's vision and that puck goes in. But that was a real good setup by MVU. Mason wins another draw. Parent trying to dig it loose, and Yando clears it, bouncing puck, and oh, that one took a crazy hop on Bouchard. That's the second of that sort tonight. Gilbert setting it up. MVU's got to get these breakouts down with the extra man right now, and they just can't find anything. Gilbert, long pass, just goes right through everybody. Yando clears it out to center. Gilbert steers it to LaRush at the point. Here they come, Mason cuts middle, turns it over, and now Vince Slett gets interfered with. Oh. Huge hit by LaRush. That might be a couple right there. That was, there's one. Just a frustrating sequence for MVU, right when things were starting to work out for them. We'll see if they get LaRush as well. But uh, it will just... definitely be, be Joel Gagne for inter, or LaRush for, in, who's going off here? LaRush will go to the bench as I'm 0 for 2 here. I just, we'll just... Kyle Gilbert was the one that interfered with Vince Lett and takes the penalty. No penalty called on Ryan LaRush. They definitely could have, though. Ah, oh, just a bad play by MBU. Shot save, Gilbert loose in the crease. And now Braylon Parent the other way. Braylon Parent moves in, flips one wide of the goal against Coffey, now centers it. Now Mason at the post. Mason trying to jam it in. He gets knocked down. Oh, Penalty fine. coming up. Parrott behind the net. Braylon Parrott tries to find it up. Now goes low. Parrott centers. Mason was there, and it stopped out in front. Cooper Coffey saving the day defensively. But we will see a BFA power a penalty here. You know, I was about to say, you know who four on four? You know who, wow. You know who gets the advantage of four on four? Braylon Parrott. Because <laughs> he's such a fast skater. You know, you get more ice. You get less people to get hit by if you're him. And just like that, BFA's lost their best defenseman now for two minutes as well as Cooper Coffey heads to the box. This is a huge opportunity, four on three for Missiskoy. We've seen now BFA only with two skaters. Here comes the third. Oh, and no, they say, oh, okay, here's what's happening. Yeah, no, last change goes to MBU, so you can't, you can't Owen change Benoit. that. Owen Benoit, the freshman out there with Horrigan, who will now take the face off, loses it. Back to the point, Stephen King across to LaRush. LaRush trying to get there. Horrigan will clear it. Oh, come on, MBU. We will have 40 seconds of four on three here. Long lead pass. Hunter Mason's up the wing. Mason with a nice deke. Mason tries to find Parent on the backhand. Get Parent back there with the it. Point. Horrigan Come knocks on. him off the puck. Horrigan turns, clears, but not out. Parent keeps it in. Parent winds. Parent moves in. Parent passes it out in front, and Ellis has it in the glove. Right, Hunter MBU Mason on the doorstep. Needs to stop playing hero hockey here. All right. Got to stop playing here, buddy. Got the four and three for 19 seconds. You have some time to set it up and pass it around a little bit. Get the best shot. Don't rush it. Here's the thing about MVU, though. Their passing has been absolutely awful tonight. They haven't been able to make those tape-to-tape -tape passes. That's been their one flaw. And Puck, wow, they're going to say it didn't go out of play. Everybody kind of stopped because it did go out of play, but no whistle. And a big hit and open ice by Vince Lent. Looked like incidental contact. Here comes Parent. Parent needs to do something here. He's been the best player on the ice tonight, and he needs to put it in the back of the net. Parent tries to dig it out. Still loose. Parent keeps it in. Parent turns. Parent shoots. Deflected out in front by LaRush, but it wouldn't go the right way. And it's cleared now by BFA. Nadu carries it in. 
Back to four on four. Nato flips a shot on and a save by PJ Bouchard. All right, we've got 30 seconds of some four on four action. Then MVU will get the abbreviated power play. Ugh. I like Braylon Parent. Braylon Parent needs to have some more faith in his teammates. He really does. He can't do it all himself. Yeah, it's, you know, MVU just doesn't really seem like they have that chemistry right now. Uh, once again, it's er early in the season, so that's difficult to ask. Yeah, this is a really game, young what, group. Three for you, the Thunderbirds? Right. I mean, you know, th this is a young group that's had some trouble so far. They just got to get that breakout down. They got to make these tape to tape passes and communicate. Bissett works his man off the puck there. Jake Benjamin goes for it in the corner. Gets knocked off it. Shot goes up into the netting. Surprised the ref saw that one. <laughs> <laughs> 309 left in the second period. Playing four on four right now. MVU about to have a five on four power play in nine seconds when Kyle Gilbert leaves the box because of his interference. <sighs> Getting friendly in that uh, penalty box for both teams. Definitely need to talk about some discipline in between intermissions. Penalties killed MVU last night in the first period. They had five penalties alone. And they were never, never able to really recover from that. Joel Gagne with it. Gagne. Gets it up. Benjamin has space. Benjamin against the young Marin. Benjamin cuts to the net. Now stops. Goes back the other way again. Trying to center it. Gilbert was there. Back up to the top. Got to toss it on net. Oh! Save. Big juicy oh! rebound. Nobody was there to get it. Oh, man. BFA will kill off the remainder of this power play. Just five seconds left. Chris Bissett gets set for it. Makes a nice move and turns it over. Brulette takes it away. Brulette has it picked off his pocket by Gilbert there, or Charlie Gates rather. And now blowing a tire is Morin. And Gil and a taken away there as Brulette had it. And we see a putt play go Morin offside. Is, hurt. is that number six? Yeah, he is hurt for MVU. Benjamin, Kyle, or uh, Jake Benjamin, number six for MVU. And now back to the point, ramping up off the stick of Stephen King and out of play. Trainer making his way over for MVU. Benjamin down off the MVU bench. Looking to be in some pain. Holding his side. That'd be a big loss for MVU, one of their youngest stars on this team. Rack up top, gets it across. Horrigan fires high and wide. Benoit keeps it in. And back around behind, that is Ryan LaRush. LaRush trying to get it up. Spun off the puck. A minute 40 to go. Oregon dumps it in. Isaac Overton on the ice now. He hasn't seen a lot of playing time tonight, but he's out there now. And it's Chipped up the boards. Parent was waiting for it, but Porter couldn't get it to him. Now Vince Lent walks in, and it's knocked down, and now MVU trying to break it out. Here comes Parent. Parent kicks to the stick, just barely on side. He has to toss it on net. LaRush goes down, sees his stick lost, and his mouth guard, and BFA takes it back up. Here comes Vince Lent, tries to deep, but lost the puck. And oh, BFA he's mad. We've got some unclaimed lumber on the ice now as Isaac Overton carries it up off the boards and the simplest of breakouts didn't work right there for Missiscoy. Overton will give it another try and a terrible pass going across, but MVU won't take the heat for that too much. Last 45 seconds now, Overton tries again and turns it over again, but Porter is there. Now Parent's in. Parent skates across, trying to get a little bit too fancy. It's there for Mason. Parent trying to turn. Mason's there, and a save by Ellis, and he covers Very it up. Very good save there. And now some pleasantries once again out in front. That was Nathan Benoit with a little bit of a shot to Hunter Mason. Just a how you doing? Where are you going for dinner tonight, Nick? Nothing, nothing new in there. 30, se 30 seconds left here. Big chance for MBU to win a face-off and get something going. 
Loose puck off the draw, taken away by Parent, or by Gagne rather, and or King. And that's one sent to the corner again. Oh, what a terrible turnover. <laughs> and we will take <laughs> that penalty trip. if it keeps him from scoring. Oh, no. oh boy, Brulette that's a trip. was Brulette was gone. Oh, that was a that was a bad penalty though, man. Like, I'm taking that penalty all day long I'm over a Colby Brulette breakaway. I'm telling my skaters to play the get good. Like you just We've seen what Colby Brulette can do. Yeah, but even that's out of position, defense. man. Like they were out of position, you got but they beat. taking a penalty tonight when BFA hasn't been able to figure things out on the power play I think is the much better option than taking your chances with a Colby Brulette breakaway. You, don't, you never want to see a penalty but you know I'm I'm gonna take that call even though you know BFA is gonna go into the third on the power play. I'm more mad that the pass because that could have been a beautiful pass to the stick and a stick to the shot but the pass was bad and the bad pass leads to a penalty. That's been the story of the night for MVU. They've done everything perfectly except pass the puck. And passing-wise, they have not done anything well. Oh, they up also haven't top, scored the puck roulette. either. And this one cleared up, bouncing in. Ellis will make the save, and the buzzer will sound. And period number two comes to a close. Same score after two. It's one nothing BFA. Yeah, it's really interesting to see how MBU is going to come out and respond. Again, same situation as last period. They will start on the PK, but it's a one-goal lead. Anything can happen here, Nick. We'll take a quick break and be right back for the third period right here on Northwest Access TV. Welcome back to Highgate, Vermont. Highgate Sports Arena. Missiskoi Valley Holiday Tournament after two periods in the Franklin County I-89 rivalry. It's MVU 0 and BFA 1. And Dustin, I was wrong when I said the second period would decide the game because we didn't see a whole lot happen in the second period. What's going to happen for each team in the third to win this game? A BFA has to come out and be the D1 team and put MVU away. And MVU has to just keep clinging to that one goal deficit and hope to get a couple bounces their way. It's been a really close game. And I think, you know, uh, either team, you know, MVU's got a real chance to run away with this thing and they can get some shots on net. Yeah, that's the thing. And MVU did outshoot BFA in the second period 10-4, to which, you know, is really impressive, a testament to the Thunderbird defense. But, you know, there's opportunities for so much more here from this Thunderbird offense. I don't think we're seeing them run at full speed right now, run at their full potential. If MVU can find a rhythm offensively. I think that this game could not only become tied or even to the lead for MVU's advantage, I think this thing could get out of hand quick. Yep. It'll be interesting to see here, you know, BFA's got a power play for 145. MVU's got to come out and kill that, and uh, we'll see what they can pull off. It's Charlie Gates in the box for MVU. He got a tripping call on Colby Brulette, which might have saved a breakaway. Here we go. Underway, final 15 minutes of this one. Roulette punched into the boards there by LaRush. Puck ripped around and up to the point, but Mason couldn't get it out. Knocked up in the air. LaRush tries to get to it, and Braylon Parent couldn't get the stick down. He only had one hand on the stick, but he knocks the puck loose. There's nobody going for it for MVU, and it's covered by Ellis. That could have been a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, my goodness. Parent, if you get those... If you get two hands onto the stick right there, go and settle that puck. You've got a breakaway. And then he got the puck behind the net, stole it from Ellis, and then there was nobody helping him out. Yeah, that's unfortunate because if MBU has one more guy in that zone, that's a goal for them. Shorthander at that. LaRush tries to keep it in. LaRush battling hard there with Nato. Nato goes middle, and Kyle Gilbert with an all-or-nothing play, and he saves it. Cleared up, but Parent can't get it out. Kept in at the line. There's a shot, and that rattles around wide of the goal. Nadu lost it. Trying to find it again, he got, he does. Back to the point, Luzinski blocked down. Here comes Hunter Mason. Mason slows down and will take Parent with him two on two. Mason fires a shot, and that is stopped by Dan Ellis. Got to right. go, go right at him right there, man. No, nah, I think that's actually a smart play because he had the BFA defenders had the angle. I think by slowing down, it threw the BFA defender off and gave him the best angle to get a shot off. 13.58 to go. 
Here comes BFA up the wing, Ben Pudva. Pudva moves in, muscled off the puck there by Stephen King. Kyle Gilbert behind. Vincelet looks up top, stolen away by Gagne. Vincelet gets it back, and it's cleared down the ice by Carter Letourneau. Good job there by MU to just take away the passing lanes and not give Vincelet an outlet to get that to the point there. Good, good, solid penalty killing. Coffey gets it over. Roulette cuts to the net, cleared away by Gilbert, and down the ice by Gagne. That'll kill it. Final five seconds of the penalty to Charlie Gates. Cooper Coffey sets it up. BFA with that dangerous power play unit on the ice. There's a shot from Yandau knocked down. And back up the ice, knocked down again off a glove of an MVU player for a whistle. BFA, that power play unit's so dangerous that you got Brulette and Vince Lett on the ice at the same time, and then Cooper Coffey, Mason Yando up top. That's deadly. Yeah, it's a very good power play. Good job by MVU to kill them all off tonight so far. Right. You got to stay out of the box, though, for MVU. You do. You cannot let those guys on the ice at the same time. Here comes Ryan LaRush up the left wing side. LaRush trying to cut to the net. LaRush trying to center one. LaRush turns it around, and there was nothing there. Now LaRush still with it. Ryan LaRush has been great tonight for MVU. Back up to the point. Chris Bissett tries to poke it in. And it's kept alive here by Horrigan. BFA will look to clear it out, but they can't. Benjamin tried to keep it in, but it was blocked down. Now Benjamin finds it on the backhand. Benjamin cuts to the middle, fires a shot on, and that's an easy glove save for Dan Ellis. 12.32 to go. At what point in this 1-0 game does MVU start to hit the panic button and say, okay, now it's time to really, really get going. It's now or never. I'd say around the six minute mark, if it's still one nothing, you know, don't do anything that would give BFA another goal right now, I would say. You know, keep playing your game. Well, Two as on I one. say that, three on one, Nick. Three on one, backhand, big save, going right to left across his crease. PJ Bouchard makes the stop, and a big hit there as Braylon Parent tries to take it up. Parent working against Marin. Parent takes it from him, and Marin slaps it off into the corner. Parent trying to stay with it, but he's working one on three. Colby Burlett will pick it up and take it out for BFA. Real good save there by uh, Bouchard for MBU. That's just that's what you got to do in a big game like this. Saving the day on a three-on-one. That's Gilbert getting crunched into the boards there by Brulette. And getting around, there is Charlie Gates, and it's dumped back in by BFA offside. Is the ruling from the officials, so they'll have to set it up. Gilbert. Gets it over. Nice breakout for MVU, but it's oh, turned over. Bad pass by MVU. You just passed it the to him. The one touch, it was a good idea, but he couldn't find it. Big move to the inside. Trying to find something is Stephen King, and a penalty is upcoming on BFA. A hooking call is the ruling, and it's going on Sean Beauregard for the Bob Whites, and the freshman winger will take a seat for two minutes in the penalty box. Only allowed to hook fish, Nick, not hockey players. <laughs> It's a big moment in this game for MVU. You know, got 11.30 left. You're down by one. You get a power play. You've been unsuccessful a couple times. Make the adjustments. Get something here. Get some good shots. Cleared all the way out. Bouchard will stop it at his own goal line. Kyle Gilbert will pick up the puck and sit behind his net. Gilbert now trying to set it up. Gilbert goes wide. Stephen King with it and some space. King tries to cut to the middle, couldn't do it. Trying to keep it in his MVU. Lemna couldn't do it, and it'll come all the way back down. Chris Bissett's there. He's got. He had uh, NATO all over him, and it's cleared back up. Uh, trying to make it. it MVU's just making it harder on themselves right now. You got to go with the simple breakout passes. They're trying to get way too pretty. Here BFA's comes best defense has been MVU's offense. <laughs> Bissett gains the line, dumps it in. A minute 10 on the power play. Mason gives pressure, and BFA takes it back out. King there on defense. Mason gets a piece of it, and now BFA still has it, and it'll be cleared back in to be played by Ryan LaRush. LaRush goes off the boards. Mason plays it. Tipped back down. And what's the call here? Not sure what that call is, but we will see a face-off.
Trying to see what the call is. Looks like both benches are just as confused as we are. Face-off will be in the neutral zone. Ref saw something he didn't like. Parent wins the draw. Yeah, so, so Ref official made a mistake. Ref apparently called offsides when there was no offsides to be had. All right, so it's cleared back down the ice. Apparently, we're, MVU can get offsides when they bring it into their own zone. We we're very lucky to have an NCAA official standing right next to us here. <laughs> and that one will go up and out of play. I was going to say, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> All right, 9.55. So, not going to hit the panic button yet, but you know, MVU looks like they've been on the penalty kill, not the power play. This here. power play is the time to do it for MVU. Uh, it's what cleared back in again. Joel Gagne picks it up, and he's got some speed. There's the long lead pass, and he finds Mason, who dumps it in. Braylon Parent's got to get there to this one, and he couldn't do it. And Horrigan chips it up and out. On it hard is Bonnet. Gagne with him. Gagne lost the puck, but turns back and gets it out. Another dangerous pass, and it'll go out of play. Just two minutes of wasted possession there by the Thunderbirds, you would think. And it's got to be a momentum killer, too, oh, for MBU. It, it really is. To, you know, look at this and say, oh, okay, great, we've got a power play. It's time to do something now. And then spend the entire power play chasing the puck out of your own end. Very unfortunate. Oh, goodness, I don't agree with that. Hooking is the call there as I believe uh, Vincelet went down, or Bonnet went down. Did and you know the VPA sanctions bass fishing now, Nick? I did know that. So you can hook in a high school sport in Vermont, uh, just not this one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Mason Lemna going off there for MVU. I don't, I don't know about that call, Dustin. Uh, I think it's pretty clear as day. I think you can't get a go away with that right in front of the ref. It's just... Uh, it looked... It, I don't know. Maybe the tape is different, but my, my vantage point of it was that he went down by himself. Roulette couldn't find it. Pudva back to the top. Shot, oh, and it's blocked by Lazinski. That one was probably on net, but Lazinski blocked it, or by um, Vincelet knocked it down. This is your football equivalent of the drive of eight minutes left right here. This is your put away drive. You get a goal here, I think it's over. I would have to agree with you. MVU's offense just hasn't been there tonight. They clear it out now. 30 seconds killed off this BFA power play, and they will regroup, getting their first good setup offensive zone time here going on in this third period. Here comes Brulette. Brulette up the right wing side, stops, and now goes back up high. Charlie Gates gives chase, and it's back up to Cooper Coffey. Back across, and a nice poke away from Gilbert. That saved a good opportunity. BFA still got it, though. It's Yandau. Yandau spins back down to Pudva. Hudva on the backhand, goes to the forehand and finds Brulette. Brulette back up top, Coffey a shot, deflects wide. Off the stick of Vincelet. BFA setting up again, Coffey. Brulette, dangerous shot there and it's turned aside and cleared. Brulette at the top of the circle right there. Stand up night for Bouchard, he's only kept a D1 powerhouse to a goal. It's a shot saved by Bouchard on the shot from Yandau. And now MVU in transition, here comes Gagne. Joel Gagne, best chance of the game for MVU. He gets fancy with it, and he couldn't find it on net. Put but he's still on got the, the puck. Oh, stop getting fancy, kids. Gagne there, here they come, saved by Bisset at the line. Still in for MVU is Ryan LaRush. Five seconds to go. Somehow, some way, MVU's killed off the penalty, but now they're in the vulnerable minute. Here it comes, thrown out in front by Nadu, and it's taken away by Parent. Parent trying to find Mason. Got He's it. got it on his stick. Mason walks in, and a save by Ellis. Man, you can't get a better opportunity than that. You just can't. Hunter Mason had a breakaway, and Dan Ellis stands tall, and it remains a 1-0 game with 7-12 to go. 
Face off one by Parent to open space. Taken by Gilbert. I will say, if MVU brings this level of intensity to every D2 game, they got a chance of the shit this year. There's no doubt about the talent on this MVU squad this season. It's all about whether or not they can put it together. Gates trying to dig it out. Parent tries to fight through, cannot. And here comes Bonnet. Bonnet two on one. Bonnet fires. Save. PJ Bouchard has ha, is having another fantastic oh, game. Oh no! Gonna... That got him up top. And Bonnet's lucky. He's got the cage on right there because if he didn't, as we see a big hit in front of us here, I was not even looking at that. It'll be an icing. Wow. I was looking at your name board to make sure who that was. <laughs> Bang, right in front of us. Northwest Access Television coming at you live in 3D. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, Bonnet is never going to wear anything but the full cage ever again in his life yeah. after that. That one was square right to the mouth. But the cage saves the day. Lemna up the boards. Uh, Coffee outside, it's all right, so. takes it. Dustin makes the call. Well, I mean, it was a pretty and obvious call to make it. We are going to have a neutral zone face off here. Six minutes, 16 seconds to go. Is it panic time yet? I'm starting to get into that three minute zone of panic, panic, panic. You got to get more aggressive here, right? Take some more chances. Thunderbirds just need to toss anything and everything on net. You, the time for being fancy is clearly gone. Dan Ellis is clearly a good enough goaltender to stop pretty much anything. You just got to give shots and numbers on. You really just, and this goal goes back to that amazing goal in the first period where, you know, four guys got a chip on the get, kid and he still put it in the net. This has been a goalie showdown. It has. And you got you to gotta give credit to P.J. Bouchard. In the third period right now, he shut out Colchester on Wednesday and now here on Saturday has given up a goal that he didn't really have any chance on against Colby Brulette, the, the state's best scorer. The and that's the only goal he's given up this season. More big hits in front of us. And, oh, going right after him without <laughs> the stick is NATO. The analytics would say that the goal Bouchard gave up was not his fault. Yeah. Here comes Parrott. Spins. There's a shot from Mason. And it gets knocked down. Trying to find it. Benjamin with the hit into the boards. LaRush keeps it alive. Benjamin down low. Spins. Gets hit from behind. Nothing going on now. Puck's still loose. Here they come. BFA in transition. Bad, bad change. And they almost had a breakaway. Nadu almost took it in. Roulette sets up in the slot. Thrown to the net. And taken aside by Joel Gagne. It was, taken uh... down there. Hunter Mason, look, he was coming off the ice gingerly, which Not is why good. it was a bad change. Mason has two goals in the first two games of this season and just had that breakaway that he was denied on by Ellis, one of MVU's top scorers this season. It would be real bad news for MVU to lose one of their best players in this moment. Lemna oh, flips it up. I think he was hurt. I just think he's just gassed, man. Like... Dumped back in. Lemna tries to give chase. Stephen King down there as well. Up the boards. Gates tosses it on and it's blockered away. Under five minutes to go now. Gagne trying to set it free. Back up the boards. Oh, Gates couldn't get a body on it. And it's back down. Gilbert, dangerous pass across. Gates. Pass right in between the two Thunderbirds. Missiskoi trying to find something. Lemnot couldn't get it away. Four and a half minutes to go. Four and a half minutes. Still got two minutes here to get something going. So take some time. Be patient. Here comes Lemna. Trying to chip it up to Parent. Why would you put that one in the air? That's going to be a pass on the ice right there by Lemna. Parent with it now. Bad angle. Parent trying to work. Got to get a shot, man. It's up the boards there flipped high in the air LaRush knocks it down and offside is the ruling so because the puck was airborne left here and this is how I look at this you got two you got too many periods right here right for the next two minutes and five seconds you're doing everything you can to set it up take your time be patient get a couple shots but at the two minute mark you pull you think about pulling your goalie and get real aggressive MVU's got to do whatever whatever they need to do to get shots on net right now. 
and that's not playing with the puck. And you've got to make better plays in your own zone. Passes up and a bad pass taken away at the line and Bouchard makes another save right there. Hunter Mason back on the ice, gives it up to Parent. Parent up to Benjamin and now he's got Parent with him on the right wing side. Parent trying to cut in, on the net. throws it towards the net. Loose puck and covered by Ellis. You can't. MVU's just been way too fancy all day long tonight. three and a half tonight. minutes left. Skating it in, trying to get that fancy wraparound, that low percentage shot. Get it out to the point. Get some people in front of him. Set some screens. Get pucks on net. It doesn't matter how good of a skater you are if you can't get a damn puck on net. Dustin voicing his thoughts here on this one. It's been a frustrating one for MVU for sure. Dan Ellis has been good in goal. BFA's defense has been good. But at the end of the day, it's all about just not getting these quality, not getting these shots on. There's a shot gloved by Ellis. They'll make him play it. And now a whistle. Looks like it's coming all the way back. Was that an, I didn't see an icing there. I don't know what they called. I'm not sure. But it is an offensive zone faceoff for BFA with 3.14 to go. The minutes are going by faster and faster here for MVU. Time running low. NATO up the boards. NATO drops it off. Horrigan at the point. Horrigan knocked away by Lemna, but he couldn't get to it. Horrigan out skating him to the puck there. Now under three minutes to go in the game. Here comes BFA, shot from Brulette, deflects into the skates of Gagne, and he clears it to safety in the corner. Brulette finds it again, loses the puck, kept in at the line, sent around for Pudva, who chases behind the net. Gilbert is there, Gilbert steers it up, but Lemna couldn't get to it. Shot goes just wide, Pudva lifts it up in front, tried to turn it around and put it in out of midair. Beautiful attempt from Pudva, Gagne gets run down by Brulette. Now with two and a half to go, puck hits off the American flag. At center ice, I think and about we taking will see a time out here. If I'm MBU, MBU, they look gassed. It looks, this is where D1 program versus D2 pro, D2 program really starts to show itself, right? Because the Thunderbirds are just—they're looking tired. They're looking a little sluggish. MBU needs to get that second wind. One more, one more, two more rushes. Come on, guys. Two twenty-eight to go. Braylon Parent, Parent up the right wing side. Parent trying to find something, couldn't do it. Kept it in is. here. And a penalty upcoming. MVU will spend the majority of the rest of this game on the power play. Oh, uh, this is the best chance you could get. So, so now you don't have to pull your goalie unless if you want to, right? Now I you think you still. Uh, I'm still pulling my goalie if I'm Chris Hatton. I'm getting every extra skater. I think I that have I him can. skate up to the left circle, and I think we see how if we can get possession. And then in about 30 seconds, if you have a good, strong possession, you pull him then. And once again, it all goes back. It all goes back to the passing for MVU. You can't set up a possession if you can't make those tape-to-tape -tape passes. We've seen MVU struggle with that more than anything tonight. And they've got to find something on the power play now. Here they come. Up the middle. Gagne tips it down. Parent tries to find it. Parent and Gagne run into each other, and it'll be back down the ice a minute 55 to go. The uh, NHL self check. Always a pleasure. Here they come. Parent. They continue to try to be ballerinas rather than hockey players. I just, you just gotta get it in the zone. Like, it's just, it's not that hard. You're on the power play. Down the ice, a minute 40 to go. MVU looks like they're killing the penalty, not on the power play. And that was the same case with the last one as well. Parent has no help, gets it over to Gilbert, and Gilbert finds LaRush. LaRush stops, and they're offside. A minute 27 to go. As Dustin bangs his head up against the glass, this has been a banging your head up against the glass kind of night for MVU. It's just he can't MBU. go 0% on the power play. This is what, four or five power plays for MVU? You got to get a goal. Now BFA working without the icing call, and that's almost an advantage for them right now because they can just clear it out every time they get the puck. 
Gilbert skates up through the middle. Gilbert, no help. MVU bench wanted a power play, or wanted a penalty called. Here That's comes Stephen cool. King. The bench wants up a penalty line. called. Make it get a goal in the power play. Moves it over. Perrin a shot, and it's stopped by Ellis. They with a little tic-tac goal attempt there, but they did everything but the goal. All right, get get your bullet goalie up to the left. In there. Pull him up, pull him and up. PJ Bouchard, this is This is it right here. You've got to consider. Making that move. Oh, no. MVU takes a penalty. Of course they do, Dustin. Of course they do. <laughs> oh, come on. Got to keep you cool. Kyle Gilbert takes the penalty with 107 to go. The power play is eliminated. It will be an offensive zone faceoff for BFA. Chris Hatton pleading his case. Four on four, open ice. I mean, I guess if they insist to, if they insist to, uh, and if they insist on doing this and, you know, trying to be fancy, the four on four kind of works towards their advantage. Well, the refs are talking about it right now. We'll see. They're, we're trying to figure out what's gonna happen here. I'm trying to figure out what the call was. It must have been something. I didn't see anything in that play. I, my only thought is that it happened <clears throat> afterwards. Chris Hatton is laughing off the official. Wow. Our NCAA rules expert, Jeremy Letourneau, standing next to us has said that he has get, been given a penalty for Chirping, which is a misconduct, which explains why MBU still has five players on the ice. Because I don't think that gives them a, you don't get a power play off of misconduct. Timeout. Take and will take his timeout here. All right. So now what you're gonna do is you first off you got to win the faceoff. All right. right. Got to win the faceoff. Got to get it out of your zone. Once you are breaking into their offensive zone to the blue line, if you're MVU, that's when you pull the goalie. That's when you tell them, get out there, get up to the bench so you can get that fifth man or sixth man because you're still on the power play. Right. So, well, the thing is, though, that at the end of the day, I, I think the big part here is that the faceoff is out of the zone. It's a defensive zone faceoff, meaning MVU will have to break the puck out. They've struggled with that tonight. Also, they lose Kyle Gilbert, who's been their put best puck-moving defenseman. You know, not a whole lot. There's been not too many bright spots out of the breakout from MVU tonight. Kyle Gilbert's been the only one to be able to consistently do anything with it. Now he's gone for the game. Yeah, you really uh, just just a bad time to get a misconduct man like i know you're hot i know you're heated but shut up like seriously <laughs> like you know like your team is on the power play you can yell at the refs after the game if you right. really need to all it needed to do was wait one minute and seven seconds longer send and you a subtweet or something up. man don't actually get teed up in a game it's the same thing about the technical foul in basketball. Yep. It's literally the worst call because it's 100% avoidable. Right. All right, LaRush will take the face off against Brulette. A minute seven to go. Parent on the right wing side. We'll see what they run here. Gagne. Got to be thinking he's looking for Parent. And he gets it to Mason. Mason to Parent. Back over to LaRush. Save rebound is loose at the post. Still jamming away for it. And they get the whistle. Ellis with the cover up. MVU clearly with a nice set play there. Oh. But man, they get the offensive zone face off. But that was, I, I've got to feel like that was their shot. Well, they got 52 seconds left. So they get one face off. And they're pulling the goalie now. So we're pulling him officially. Very quietly taking PJ Bouchard to the bench. Mason Lemna takes his spot on the ice. The, met, the net is empty. It's a six on four for MVU. 48 seconds to go. Mason gets it loose. Mason to the top. Stephen King off the stick. Loose puck in front. Turns it over. LaRush, a drive. Save. Loose puck. Rebound. Mason trying to save it. Gets it out. 30 seconds to go. Okay, LaRush go. sets it up. Here comes Stephen King up the up the boards. He passes it off to the corner. Parent goes for it in there. Parent centers it. King will settle. Calm King 
looking, shooting, save, rebound. Cooper and Coffey will have it. Cleared back around. MVU still got it. Cleared up center. And on the ice is Brulette. And he hits the post. The game's still alive, but there's only five seconds to go. Brulette will wrap it around. And BFA will hold on. Uh, heartbreaker for the Thunderbirds, Nick. Colby Brulette's first period goal proves to be the difference. And MVU lose an loses an absolutely frustrating heartbreaker, one to nothing. A lot of positives to come from this game, Dustin. But man, what could have been tonight? All right, if, I'm, if I have to give out three stars, because it's a hockey thing, Avi's first star is going to be Mr. Bouchard. He just put, he actually count as a shutout. Poor kid. Uh, second one is going to be Guy Ellis, and the third one is going to be the guy, the goal scorer from the first period there. Just a good game for both teams, but uh, just you got to be frustrated if you're MVU. You had so many chances. BFA has got to be relieved, but you would think that Toby Duplin is not going to be happy about this win. Yeah, this one's one that BFA has got to look at and say, listen, we can't play like this. Even even if MVU is going to be a top team in Division Two this season, BFA has got big, much bigger fish to fry. You play uh, like that against Essex, you're losing by five goals. Right. You know, it, this is uh, not something BFA wants. This, this has not been the good start BFA has been looking for uh, to begin this season. A rough game yesterday against Northeast Clinton. They barely uh, snuck away with a tie in that one. They barely sneak away with a win at MVU today in a game that you know, they, MVU didn't really have any business winning, but BFA just didn't show up tonight. And they are lucky to skate away with uh, a win and a tie here from this holiday tournament. But, you know, positive for MVU. I think this is a moral victory, even though it's very frustrating. To play BFA to a one nothing game is huge. And for BFA, they've got a, it's very clear from this first weekend of the season, they have a lot to work on. We'll have a little post-game celebration going on here to celebrate the tournament. Uh... I think that's going to be it for us, Nick. Yep, that'll do it for us here from Highgate. It's been a great holiday tournament. For Dustin Tanner, I'm Nick Mumley. Thank you for tuning in today as BFA knocks off MVU. It's one to nothing the final here from Highgate. This program is made possible in part by the following sponsors. At Northwestern Orthopedics, we celebrate the role that physical activity and sportsmanship play in a healthy lifestyle. We are proud to help athletes of all ages stay in the game through injury prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation. Northwestern Orthopedics, restoring function, enhancing lives. Rise Vermont, good health is key to a happy life. Rise Vermont is a movement towards better health for people of all ages in Franklin County. Joining Rise Vermont will give you tools, support, reward, and recognition for moving more, eating well, and connecting with your community. Embrace your new healthy lifestyle with Rise Vermont. Fiddlehead Dental. Located in St. Albans, Fiddlehead Dental has spent decades creating a family partnership between its staff and patients. With no lectures and the newest comfort technologies, the dental welcomes patients of all ages in an effort to keep everyone in Franklin County smiling. JC Image. With 25 plus years serving local schools, clubs, and regional businesses, JC Image continues to stress quality care and customer service. Check out their apparel work on our Northwest Access TV videographers throughout the year. Andy Buick GMC Cadillac. A family-run business spanning three generations has been serving the community since 1958. You can catch owner Dave Handy on the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County on Channel 15, Northwest Access Television. Handy Chevrolet, serving Franklin County for over 50 years with a new and pre-owned Chevrolet inventory and a state-of-the-art certified service department. To learn more about how your company can become a local sports sponsor, contact Northwest Access TV at 802 782 8676.